Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got the R1 out of storage, it's back. So today we're gonna to be working on this. We're gonna be finishing the LED halo light conversion we started a while back. We've got new sprockets front and back, we're gonna be swapping them out. We've got a couple of parcels here, they're gonna be going on today. Let's get it built back up. Show you around it a little bit. So you'll remember from a couple of videos back, we did the new paint job on the frame. It's a bit dusty at the minute, but that'll soon wipe up. It looks so much better in satin black than it did in the silver. Let's go around this side. As you can see, we've got a new rear sprocket. That's a larger socket, a larger amount of teeth. We're going to be swapping out this smaller cog for a larger cog. Not a smaller cog, sorry. So we're going to go larger at the back, smaller at the front. That'll give us faster acceleration. We'll be quick off the line. It's going to be wheelie happy. We're going to put the bike up on its paddock stands now. Makes it a little bit easier to work on. Keeps it off the floor. I'm not going to worry about it tipping over. We're going to start by removing this back wheel. We need to do this in order to swap the front sprocket. We've taken off the nut now. We're going to slide the axle bar out. We're going to remove the rear wheel. We need to get that out of the way. We're going to put the axle back in. Now the rear axle's back in. We're going to tighten it back up. Just nip it. We don't have to go mad. What we're going to do, we're going to put a bit of black electrical tape on the frame just to protect the paintwork. That way when we slide the chain on, we don't make a mess. We've got the frame all taped up now, so we're going to start running the chain round the sprocket, pulling it down underneath and across to the back axle. Now, this little washer here goes all the way around. It's bent off slightly there, so we need to bend that back to the frame, not the frame, the sprocket, to allow us to get the socket right on. So, all we're going to do is gently tap that back, make sure it's right back to the sprocket. This is what you need to do to get your front cog off. Wrap your chain around your axle, pop a screwdriver down through the top into the bottom. Now I've put two through just to make sure so I don't want it slipping. And then we're gonna come around here. I'll just set that up there. we go we're gonna get the socket on it and we're gonna get it off now this is gonna take a bit of force go on ah. there's the washer what was flattened back earlier they prevent the nut from slipping. And that's it. We're now going to take the chain back off, take the cog off, and we're going to insert the new one. That's the chain off. So we should be able to just remove it. So that's the old one. We're going to swap this out for a smaller one, less teeth, which gives us faster acceleration. So this is the size difference between the two cogs. As you can see, it's quite a bit different. So the old cog, that's got 16 teeth. The new cog, that's got 14 teeth. So that's gonna be a dramatic difference. As you can see side by side, you can tell the difference there. So let's insert the new one. It don't matter which way around you put this on, it's the same both sides. So let's line it up. There we go. So 
So this is the new rear sprocket. I believe this to be a 74 tooth. I think the original were a 64. So we've gone up by 10 teeth. That's the size difference. Quite a big difference there. So we're going to need a longer chain now to suit the bigger rear sprocket. So we're going to put the tyre back on and we're going to get a correct measurement and we're going to get that on order. Right, so we're about one, two, about three links too small now. So I'm going to count the links on the original chain, which is this one minus the split link I've already taken out and order one the appropriate size. Right, there we go, that's neutral. We need a bit of fuel as well, it's running low. Running low, you've got no fuel tank on it. Perfect. In one of my previous videos, you'll have seen me working on the LED halo ring headlight conversion. This is it. Tinted screens on the front. I like blue light in, so they're going to be blue. The halos are blue. Now, we're going to mount this in place. Now, we're going to get this wired up. And hopefully, we'll get it working today. Right, so we've got all the wiring harness finished up now. It's all wired in. These are all the connections for the halo lights. I've got the indicator just hooked up temporary. I've got the rear indicator there. You can see that hanging down, hooked up temporary. Just so I can show you that it all works. So let's turn the indicator on to the left. That's the rear. That's the front. Now this is what it's all about. How's that for an indicator in a headlight? That's pretty good, that. I like that. Actually, while I'm here, let me show you. We'll turn that off. Let's put the daytime running light on. You can see, nice, nice blue tint to it. So, so as you can see, we've got the daytime ring light bulb there, original. We've got the LED ring in there. Again, just like filming on the Hummer, it struggles to pick up the colour. And I'm, I'm not sure why. I might need a different lens for it, just to pick up the light. But yeah. We're not looking bad. Now, headlight. Headlight. No, that's bright. Wow, that hurts my eyes. But they are ridiculously bright. If it gets dark a bit later on, I'll come back out. I'll turn these on. It's a wiring harness after I've finished wiring up my lights. All taped back up, all heat shrinked, all wrapped. So it should be. And we're just going to put a bit of tape under here just to hide that bit because that's a bit loose. And I'm going to tape up my connectors as well just to stop any water penetrating. I seem to have a bit of a problem with this halo ring. It's not bright at all, it's pretty dull. Whereas that one, it's really bright. I think we're going to have to take the headlight unit back out and we're going to have to swap that ring out. I think it's faulty. These are the new plastics. We've gone black and white. That's the nose cone there. Got the tail. We've got the side fairings and we've got bits and bats under there. So this is the original brake light. We're going to be swapping this one out with this clear LED. We've also got integrated switch signals, same as the front. Bit of wiring to do on this, so I'm going to do that now and then we'll finish putting it back together. 
we've got the new LED lights wired in now, so we're just going to run a test on it. Brake. That's good. Indicators. It will flash quicker because they're not all wired in yet. But they work fine. We've got the bottom section of fairing on now. That's nice under there. These sides on as well. Now we're going to get the top section on and continue building up. Before we install any more plastics, this whole door, it don't work that well. So I've bought a new 125 decibel horn. This is going to be loud. So we're going to install this and then we're going to finish up with the plastics. We're just going to finish up the wiring now. That's it for today guys, that's all we can get done. But I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow, all being well. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.